Hey everybody, uh, this is Josh from CE Datum. Uh, I just wanted to uh, go over the disc that I got from the Jeff Gold collection. The majority of these actually came from uh, the discs that Christopher picked up. And a couple of them came from Randall Gold, Jeff's brother. Um, so what happened was... When Jeff passed away, uh, his brother came and took uh, like half the discs, probably less than half, like 400 discs or so, and some players, and I guess like uh, their sister uh, took some stuff too. And so then they contacted me to pick up the rest of the discs, and not being local, uh, I posted it on the Facebook group. And Christopher, well, Rebecca contacted me first, and so I told her the location, contact information for uh, picking up the discs, and I guess she couldn't do it for some reason, so she contacted Christopher. So then Christopher went and picked up the first half of the discs, and then there was some miscommunication, or the guy went on vacation or something like that and left, and... So then he wasn't able to get the second half, but then when the guy got back from vacation or changed his mind or something, I don't know the whole story, but he contacted Christopher to come get the rest of the discs. So all the discs that were at Jeff Gold's apartment were taken and accounted for. So nothing wound up in the trash. And then Christopher uh, picked out the stuff that he wanted and posted some stuff for sale in the group. Um, and then sold, you know, some, whatever, and all the extras he said that I could come get to bring to the workshop. Um, and then Randall contacted me and told me the stuff that he had gotten and offered to sell it. So me and Chris split the lot and we brought, so then when the workshop happened, I, the day before I went to Christopher's and picked up that half of the discs. And then the next day I went to Randall's and picked up the second half of the discs. So then we brought it all back to I brought it all back to Indy and reunited the collection. So it was all together again, uh, for the most part, minus the stuff that some people had kept. But um, with that said, um, I'm sure a lot of people got discs at the workshop, um, and then whatever was left over went to Keith. So this is the stuff that I got. And like I said, most of this came from Christopher. There was actually very few uh, good titles that Randall had grabbed. He clearly had no idea what they were, what titles were good or anything like that. He just kind of grabbed a random lot of discs. Um, and so, I was just going to go through these and show you what I got. This is the uh, Stereo Mono Service. Actually, this one is not, sorry. This one is Blowout. And that's what disc is actually in here, I checked. And so I used this as my autograph disc for the workshop. Um, it was good seeing everybody. Uh, I'm glad everybody uh, that could make it came. It was a good time. Uh, this is a blank caddy. I'm going to zoom out here so it's easier to see. But this is a blank caddy with the entertainment game. It's the one that was released. It's not the other one. I do have the caddy for the other one that I got from Scott. But this is the other version. I had no idea what the difference is. This actually has Paddington Bear Volume 1 in it. But I had grabbed that one so that maybe I could just stick it in this caddy so it kind of had the same disc in it even though the uh, barcode doesn't match. Apparently this had Flash Dance in it at one time too. All right, uh, let's see here. And then this is, it says service test disc. And the reason I grabbed this one is because on the back it says preliminary test disc, do not use segment S. No idea why, and I've labeled all my discs Jeff Gold. But that's an interesting one. And then this, this is actually a stereo mono service alignment disc. And it was actually sitting on the floor like I hadn't meant to grab this. 
but nobody else grabbed it. So I was like, well, if nobody's claimed this, I'm just going to grab this and take it with me. So, but yeah, I didn't realize that it was a stereo service disc as well, but it's in a white caddy. So not sure what that's all about, but, um, oh, they're doing fireworks outside and dog was scared. So this is two hours, one side. Uh, I pulled the disc out and side two was Paul Simon in stereo. And I didn't know what side one was. I've never seen that number before. And it wasn't in my database. So I popped it in the player and played it. And it turned out to be Poltergeist. And I looked Poltergeist up on the list and there's like four different versions of it. And that number doesn't match any of the versions. So this must have been so this must have been release, released later on uh, when they were trying to put two hours on one side. Um, like as a test disc, I guess. And apparently they were using Poltergeist to try to fit two hours on one side. I don't know. So that's an interesting one. Mm. This is the World's Fair disc. Uh, Eric from Iowa actually brought this to the workshop one year. And we watched it. Um, and I've I've checked all these discs to make sure that what it says is actually what's in there. And if it's not, I've relabeled it. So that was the World's Fair disc. That actually came from Christopher as well. Uh, and then I grabbed these two just because they're gray caddies. Uh, we got Long Riders. And we got Footlight Parade. Um, this one I grabbed because it says Pam. Um, it is, this one is 39 steps. And I assume that that means that Pam was the one that evaluated it. Since her name's on there. Probably would have been part of her library. And then the same thing with this one too. It says, primary disc used for evaluation, Pam. And this one is Easy Rider. So that's why I saved that one as well. And then I'm not sure, but I think this might be Pam's handwriting. This Muppets Take Manhattan, but I'm not certain on that one. But either way, this is a pretty good movie, I guess. Um, I don't have it. I haven't really saved it on any other format or anything. So I grabbed that one. And then we got Birth of a Nation, disc one. This one actually doesn't have the label on all the way. And Birth of a Nation Disc 2, this one the label was also peeling a little bit. And I and it looks like he just kind of glued the edges on. Like just glued it around the edge. He didn't even put glue in the middle. So not sure what that's all about. I think a lot of these he just grabbed extra labels and then just put the labels on the discs himself. And this is Horowitz in London. Oh yeah, this is the other Black Hawk film, FDR Years, third term. And this one uh, we found in uh, Jeff, or in uh, uh, Gunter John's collection as well. But it, I think it might have only been PAL, I can't remember. But either way, we've never seen the label for it before. This is Horowitz in London. The barcode is cut off, but I do know the barcode number. It's on the list. But um, I imagine that they cut the barcode off because it was either like a test pressing and they didn't want an employee to sell it or anything I'm gonna have to do some repair work on the label for this it's kind of a little damaged um, I think this came from Jeff Gold I got this from Christopher and I know he said that he had uh, like ordered got one somewhere else so I don't know if this one was from Jeff Gold's collection or if this was the one that he got from somewhere else and then there was the wildlife I grabbed some. So these are the ones that I grabbed to like improve copies that I already have. So the wildlife, crimes of passion. This is this is the Charlie Daniels band. I have a nice label disc for it, but the caddy, or I have a nice caddy with label, but the disc inside is toast. So I grabbed that one. Uh, Impulse, the last waltz. This one was a property stamp, so I grabbed that one. Uh, this Goonies is like mint condition. 
Uh, and then Christine McVie with a property stamp, which I mean, it's just kind of a hard to find title. It's not really like anything super great, I guess. But um, got a property stamp on the back too, even. And then Let It Be, I've been looking for a good playing copy. Uh, this actually has the recess uh, from the early discs. I don't know if you can see the recess for the label there. But there was the first like 50 titles that were released had the recess in there, I believe. So I've been trying to find all of them. Uh, the day after, start to finish is sealed. Never Cry Wolf. Scarface. See, like, this is what I'm talking about by the label. Like, I think he probably pasted this label on himself. This one was unfortunately had High Noon in it, but it's a really nice looking caddy. And then this one was unfortunately empty. Oops. But it's a really nice looking caddy. Yeah. And then this one is Spies Like Us, but the label's loose. And then it had Perils of Gwendolyn and the Land of the Yik Yak on a white caddy. So I, and it's actually over another label. So I peeled the corner here and it has Jacques Cousteau underneath it. And then this was going to be the CE Datum test disc, but I think we ended up using a different Rocky II instead. And this is Colton. He came to say hi. Hi. That's where all those noises that you're hearing are coming from. Uh, this is the Rocky Three disc that that uh, I think somebody just kind of left behind. Colton grabbed it. And then Jeremiah Johnson. I've been meaning to watch this. I've heard it's really good. Um, I don't think I have a copy, so I grabbed that one. Up the Creek is a good title. I don't think mine plays very well, so I grabbed that one. Uh, the Birds I got from Christopher through the mail. A lot of these I bought, through, bought from him earlier, so they came through the mail. Uh, I think Sweet Dreams is one that he sent me just because it has a loose label. And the same thing with this Murphy's, Murphy's Romance. Um, Stay Lake 17 is actually real genius. That's, that's Toy Story on Blu-ray. Um, this Dragon Slayer I think I grabbed just because it's a white caddy. It actually has... Dr. Zhivago Part 2 in it. Dr. Zhivago Part 2. And then this one I think I also grabbed just because it's in a white caddy. But it has Beverly Hills Cop in it. And then all the rest of these I grabbed just because they were in different color caddies than normal. Um, so I was going to add them to the variation list. I think I'm kind of on the fence about that just because... Um, I think some of these he might have put labels on himself, or they might have been mistakes that were made at the factory, like, I don't know. But uh, Moscow on the Hudson is a stereo title, it's usually in a blue caddy. Uncommon Val Valor, same thing, stereo title, usually in a blue caddy. Under Fire, same deal. City Heat, blue caddy, usually. Iceman, same thing, usually in a blue caddy. Romancing the Stone. Uh, White Knights is usually in a well, it's a stereo title. I think this one he just gave me because it has a, a loose label. Cocoon is usually in a white caddy because it's a late release, but it is a stereo title. Cross Creek, same thing, late release. Well, I think it's a later later release, but yeah, it's usually in a white caddy. I think this is stereo. I believe it is. Color, maybe it's not stereo. I'm not sure on that one. Uh, Soldier Story is stereo. That's usually in a blue caddy. Same thing with Places in the Heart is usually in a blue caddy. St. Elmo's Fire is a late release. That's usually in a white caddy, even though it is a stereo title. Same thing with this one. This is usually in a blue caddy because it's a stereo title. But this one was in a white. Rocky IV you always see in a white caddy. This one was in blue. Asia and Asia. This one has a blue spine. But a white caddy, it is a stereo title. 
2010, same thing. It's supposed usually in a blue caddy. Lady Hawk I have seen in both, but I grabbed this one just because I don't have it. Slugger's wife, he actually had one in each, so he had a blue one and a white one, so I grabbed both of those. Hard to hold is a stereo title, usually in a blue caddy. Teachers, stereo title, usually in a blue caddy. Songwriter, stereo title, usually in a blue caddy. Same thing with Birdie. Same thing with the Twilight Zone. This one used to have another disc in it, cause hence the Sharpie on top. I guess this one is just one that I grabbed because I I don't believe I've ever seen this movie and you don't see it come up for sale very often and this one's like in really nice shape so I grabbed that and then Superman 3 is usually in a blue caddy this is just part 2 it has the UPC cutout and that's it so I grabbed about I think like 68 to 70 discs somewhere in there um, and then I did grab a couple labels as well. Uh, Colton wanted this Christine, so we grabbed the label for that. And then, obviously, Last House on the Left was never released, so I grabbed that one. And then, this Warrior and the Sorceress I grabbed, just because this title is always destroyed. So those are the three labels that I grabbed. Um, yeah, and so that's uh, pretty much what I kept from the Jeff Gold collection. Thanks for watching.